Stand by to initiate release sequencer. On my mark. Five. Raw express elevator to hell. Going down. Two. One. Mark. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark, a.k.a. Derringer. Today is Sunday, March 3rd, and you are listening to episode 198 of the Instant Action Podcast, your weekly source for planetside news and information. As always, I'm brought to you by great listeners like you via the Support the Show tab on instantactionpodcast.com. So first up, what's been going on with me this week? Uh, as I said last week, been playing a bit more Planet Side 2 this week. No Planet Side Arena, unfortunately, uh, since that's kind of been shelved and they're all regrouping and rethinking more beta stuff, which I'm a little disappointed in. I was hoping that we would see more beta playtesting, even though they've decided to push things out. I'd still like to see them, you know, once or twice a week still have a beta session going on. So I'm a little disappointed in that because I'd like to play that a little bit more. But like I said, that means that I could spend more time playing Planet Side 2. Um, and I saw I saw recently some people I haven't seen in Planet Side 2 log back in and play a bit more. So uh, I was actually excited about that and had some good times playing uh, with a lot of Bax people that aren't playing it as much as they used to be. Uh, other than that, I got my general Apex Legends stuff in, and I also actually picked up uh, a Nintendo Switch this past week, which I've been playing around with, uh, having a lot of fun with the new Zelda game, or I guess it's not new at this point, but uh, the Breath of the Wild game from Zelda. And no, uh, Robo, I have not picked up the Let's Go Eevee or Pikachu game yet, um, but uh, maybe I will in the future. Um, but other than that, I, I, I also picked up the new Mario Kart because anytime you have a Nintendo game, if you don't have the Mario Kart game, then you're doing things wrong. Uh, and I probably have to pick up the Smash Brothers game too because just that's what you do. Uh, but other than that, I, uh, I, I've been spending a lot of my time uh, redesigning my daughter's room. You know, obviously she's off at college right now, so uh, I kind of have a room that I can redo as I wish. So I've turned it into kind of a, uh, there's a big living room area up there now with a, my big screen TVs up there and all my game systems attached to it. And uh, uh, it's a good escape for me while she's away at college. Of course, she's going to be on spring break next week and I'll have to give up the room, but hey, that's okay. Uh, that means I'll spend more time in Planet Side 2 next week. But enough about me. What's in store for this week's show? Well, first, I want to talk about the Player Studio announcement that Nick made this week, followed by some sad news regarding a longtime Planet Side 2 champion. And then after a new veteran's voice, for real this time, uh, I want to talk about some DirectX 11 expectations and then finish up by talking about the ping system in Planet Side 2. So strap in as we hot drop into another episode of the Instant Action Podcast. So like I said, first this week, I want to talk about the uh, announcement that the Player Studio Artist Registration will be closing on March 25th. And it looks like based on this announcement that uh, Nick has been also named the new producer for the Player Studio program. Obviously, he's the producer for Planet Side 2, but he writes in this, uh, in, in this notice, he says, Hi there, I'm Nick Silva, producer on Planet Side 2 and new producer for the Player Studio program. We've got some big changes coming up for the program, so let's get right to it. First and foremost, the Player Studio website will continue to take new submissions for the foreseeable future. However... We will be disabling new artist registrations on the Player Studio site on March 25th, 2019. If you're an artist that has always meant to submit art for one of the Player Studio supported games or you know someone who is, now is the time to get into the program. Uh, so that's the most important section as far as I'm concerned regarding this. If, if you have 
ever had ideas of submitting things to Player Studio to get placed into Planet Side 2 uh, or, again, any other uh, Daybreak Games thing, uh, because in addition to Planet Side 2, the, um, the Player Studio also also takes submissions for EverQuest and EverQuest 2. So I, I know there's people doing all of those various things. But uh, the, yeah, the, the registration for this is expiring on March 25th. Uh, assuming that they're going to reopen things later on, this is actually going to give you one, two, three, th- about three weeks at this point if you've ever wanted to create stuff for any of those games to register for this before they disable the new registrations. So uh, really this is a call to get your asses in gear if you've ever wanted to do something like that. Uh I've registered on it, but I've never submitted anything. Uh, the good news for someone like me who's already registered, uh, they're going to take sub- continue to take submissions for anyone who has previously registered on the site and also completed your tax form validation. Uh, but then Nick goes on to write that in the meantime, we'll be evaluating options for overhauling the Player Studio site with the intention of allowing broader categories of submissions and a more streamlined submission process. So that tells me that they want to move along from just decals and things like that. So I guess decals are a big one. And the other big one is armors and things like that in the game, uh, helmets primarily. So it sounds like they probably want to move away from some of that. So for someone like me, who I guess you can call me an artist, even though I am... Uh, doing podcasting. Uh, I'm hoping that the Player Studio site is going to also allow the addition of things like voices and stuff like that because it has always been my dream to do some voice work for Planet Side 2 or for any Planet Side title uh, ever since Planet Side 1 and then ever since I've been podcasting here about Planet Side 2 and Planet Side in general. Uh, I, I have always wanted to lend my voice. Uh, creatively to planet side and make that sort of mark on the game itself. Uh, and I've always said anybody at planet side Two, any of the devs at daybreak games ever want to reach out to me. Uh, I am more than happy to assist and do something like that. Uh, it's, kind of been something that I've wanted to do. So uh, I hope that while they are planning on doing this overhaul, that that might be something that they consider. Now, granted, there's a lot of people that do much better voices and things like that or have much better voices than I do. Uh, But seeing that I've been in the community now, and like I said, this is my 198th podcast uh, for uh, on the Instant Action podcast plus over 140 podcasts as ReachCast, and that doesn't even count uh, the various interviews and uh, stuff like that that we did. I mean, I'm over 400 podcasts for Planet Side at this point. Uh, so I kind of think that I'm a part of this community and would love to see something like that. So again, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they're going to open it up and include something like that because I would definitely take the time to record some stuff like that i and i always mean to record something like that for um you know the uh, recursion tracker and i never get around to it uh maybe that's something that i need to do when i have some other downtime uh and go from there but really like i said the big news on this one is uh if you are an artist who wants to submit something to player studio please register on the site and complete your tax forms before March 25th because there is no indication on when they're going to reopen this uh, as they reevaluate the options that they have. Uh, And with that, there's your PSA for the day. Let's move on to our second topic this week. And as I hinted at the beginning, the second topic is kind of sad news. Now, someone that I have quoted multiple times on this podcast and uh, gone to the well many times with his content uh, has discontinued doing Planet Side 2 stuff. And if you weren't aware, uh, that's Iridar. Uh, Iridar is someone that I like an awful lot. Do I always agree with everything that he posts? No, uh, but 
no one agrees with everything that I post at all times, so that's perfectly fine. But he made an announcement on Reddit this week that he will no longer be doing Planetside 2 content. He did say that Iridar.net will stay up for the time being, uh, and Uzi38, that's U-Z-Z-I 38, is going to be keeping the information up to date. Uh, and basically from now on, any questions, comments, or concerns regarding the Iridar.net information should go to Uzi38 so that he can continue to keep it updated. Now, Iridar says he doesn't want people to make a big deal out of this. Uh, he doesn't want it to be the, oh my God, dead game, bleeding vets, etc. stuff. Um, he just wants everyone to know that the simple truth is that he's now occupied with something else. He's been working on modding XCOM 2 at this point, uh, where he says he can be a quote-unquote pretend developer uh, and earn some cash and get some experience so that hopefully he can be hired as a real game developer one day. Uh, and he did say he's not completely going to go away. He'll still drop in and try out the new content. Uh, but he's not going to be doing anywhere near the amount of work that he was doing in the past on Iridar.net. Uh, he finally ends by giving a big thank you to everyone who supported him, especially monetarily. Uh, and said that everyone was keeping him going when he was ready to give up on doing what he was doing. Uh, now, on a personal note from me. As you guys will recall, uh, you know, I talked to Iridar a bunch about getting a new graphics card and stuff like that and potentially upgrading my computer at the time uh, and just other conversations with him in and out of the game uh, about different things. Uh, I really valued his opinion and also valued the information that he put into the game itself. Now, granted, like I said, I didn't always agree with everything everything that he was writing, uh, some of the stuff that was his personal opinions. You know, everybody has their opinions and everybody's entitled to disagree with opinions. But more than anything, I valued the content that he brought to the game and valued the new player information that he had available on one site. And I know the devs valued that from him as well. So I will be the first to say that, Iridar, you will be missed uh, and I'm di uh, disappointed is kind of the best word that I can throw at it, that uh, you're not going to be doing Planet Side 2 stuff anymore. But I do wish you the best, and I do hope that someday you are a real game developer. And when you are a real game developer, reach out to me, because I'd love to talk to you. Uh, but with that, I wish you the best, Iridar, uh, and definitely you'll be missed. But... Let's listen to Veteran's Voice this week because Romus is back. Uh, he's no longer dead or has no voice, etc. So, Romus, take it away. No bloggins. I said no cheesy. Welcome back, music. All right. I've been helping to train a new recruit these past few weeks, and I've noticed something that I hadn't noticed before. The map spawning rules are mighty confusing. With the brass unable or unwilling to explain the map and the spawning rules, it means that newbies often end up lost and frustrated before they can do anything else. Allow me to attempt to alleviate those issues. If you zoom in just a tiny bit on the map, by default the M key, you'll see lines that connect bases on the map. These are the lattice. You can only take bases that connect these lines. Additionally, you can only flip capture points at those connected bases if your base is not currently being flipped. If you can't defend what you have, you're not moving forward. This is why the most powerful weapon on Araxis is teamwork. Find yourself an outfit, or at the very least, a friend. I'll even lend out bloggins if you're hard-pressed for someone to soak bullets for you. Remember, the only difference between a scrub lord and a superman is learning from your mistakes. Back to you, Derringer. You want to get us sued, you imbecile? No copyrighted music. Thank you for that, Romus. Good map information. And with that, moving on to topic number three this week, just a little news about DirectX 11. 
So a lot of people have been asking about what we might see in DX11 within Planet Side 2, and Nick actually popped himself on to Reddit to answer some of our various questions and give us some various information uh, about DX11. So he wrote, just to be 100% transparent about what is coming, DirectX 11 will look and play exactly like DirectX 9, but should run at a significantly faster frame rate. Only after we have delivered a stable port to DirectX 11 to live will we look to reverting some of the graphical tweaks made in the name of performance over the years. Now, to me, initially, this is good news because they're not looking to make any other changes to PlanetSide 2. They're just looking to... Uh, slap on DirectX 11 support, which, according to Nick, uh, and according to what I'm hearing from Daybreak Games, should result in a decent increase in frames for all players. Um, that's nothing but good news, because frames are the biggest complaint of pretty much everybody in Planetside 2 right now, so if we can get some sort of good support for DirectX 11 with no other changes to the game, uh, that results in faster frame rates. That's not that that can't be bad for the game itself. Now, obviously, like he says, they're not going to look to revert a lot of the OMFG uh, Operation Make Faster Game changes that they made many years ago. It also means that they're not going to be reintroducing something like PhysX to the game or anything like that. They're just looking to make a stable port of DirectX 11 onto live and give everybody much better frame rates within the game itself, uh, which, again, is nothing but a good thing for all players. Now, in response to this, there were a couple other questions that people asked that Nick also gave some information regarding. Uh, like someone asked if there would be any public benchmarking of the DX9 versus DX11, uh, like some sort of flyover script of a big fight in an FPS-hungry location that people can run to, to send some reports back to... Uh, Daybreak Games, and Nick's response to that was that they're not going to be doing anything like that, but they are running a lot of internal benchmarks to conform the performance boosts. He says that once DirectX 11 hits the PTS, though, they will need help from the PlanetSide community to test under practical load conditions while they run deep telemetry on several clients. Since live will still be Direct X9 at that point, it will give the public a chance to do some informal comparison tests during this time too. So that's good news. Look for Direct X11 coming to the PTS. And then once it does come to the PTS, that's when we're going to have to spend a lot of time getting on there, testing it, helping them out as best as possible to make sure the port goes a hundred percent smoothly. Uh, this might be a good time, uh, just anecdotally, for Daybreak Games to think about some other awesome helmet to give away or some armor to give away. Uh, I know they've given out the analyst helmet in the past for people helping uh, on their big PTS tests. Um, I think pretty much everybody has the analyst helmet at this point, so maybe it might be time to think about giving away another helmet or maybe having some analyst armor created so we can get lots of people and a good reason for more people to get on PTS and help you out. Now, someone else asked a question uh, if there's a chance that there could be a negative impact, impact for some people who might be using older GPUs. Uh, and Nick did say that they have cons confirmed that there are about 100 active monthly users that are not running DirectX 11 compatible graphic cards. Now, that's kind of surprising. Um, so thinking about that, looking at lists, you have to be running worse than a GeForce GT 430 uh, or on the AMD side, you have to be running something worse than a uh, Radeon 5450. Uh, and I mean, these are ancient cards. Seeing how the GT430 was released uh, October 11th, 2010, and the Radeon 5450s were launched in February of 2010. I mean, at this point, we're talking about nine-year-old graphics cards. Uh if you are older than nine-year-old graphics cards, if you haven't updated your graphics card in nine or ten years, 
Um, I, I think it's time to bite the bullet and make an upgrade. Just looking at some comparison charts, uh, I like to use the gpu.userbenchmark.com site as an example. Uh, I mean, I'm just checking the GTX 1050. Uh, maybe I should do 1050 Ti, which is about a $150 graphics card. I mean, that's probably the cheapest graphics card that you could probably get away with right now and potentially play. Well, I mean, if you're playing planet side 2 on a gt430 at this point uh, i'd be surprised well again these people are playing on something older than a gt430 at this point um if you're doing a 1050 ti uh it's 837 percent faster uh than the gt430 and comparing it to the radeon 5450 it's 2740 percent faster uh than the uh radeon 5450 so i mean just going up to a 1050 ti which is a pretty darn cheap uh, option at this point i mean you're better off at this point going with a you know a 1060 uh, just a three gigabyte version or even going i mean that's 170 some odd dollars or go with the um the new uh 10 what is it a 1066 sorry a 1660 ti at this point that's a new one that just came out i mean those are a little more expensive and i'd probably opt for something different but again if you're still using, and, and maybe I need to compare the 5450 versus, you know, a, a comparable um, uh, Radeon version, AMD version. I mean, if you want to compare the 5450 versus, the you know, a 580, an RX 580, which is only 180 some odd dollars, I mean, it's 5,000% faster uh, than the uh, 5450. So again, if you're using a 10-year-old video card at this point, uh, it's time to upgrade, and for under $200, you can get a huge upgrade at this point, and you really should be doing it. Uh, maybe those people are playing Planetside 2 on a laptop. If that's the case, you can't update your graphics card, and you're kind of stuck with what you got. But, I mean, definitely at today's day and age, if you're using a 10-year-old graphics card, um, I'm not surprised that you're going to run into issues. So, again, um, he does say that this is less than 1% of monthly active users are going to run into an issue um, going to DirectX 11 because, again, your graphics card doesn't support it. Now, he does say that there should be zero cases where anyone who has a DX11 compatible card experiences performance drops. Um, they will, however, be looking for any weird hardware driver-specific issues caused by their implementation of DirectX 11 during a, any community tests. Uh, but again, if you're using an old graphics card at this point, just bite the bullet and make the upgrade. Uh, and then finally, someone else asked if DirectX 11 will allow for better transparency or at least more shiny things. And Nick responds that uh, it does enable them to do more shiny things. Whether they add anything or not is still to be seen. Uh, he does say that at the very least... Uh, there were some very cool uh, video effects assets created for Planetside Arena that they're very interested in bringing into Planetside 2. So uh, good that they're always, you know, working with Planetside Arena stuff to get into Planetside 2. That was something that they mentioned from the start. Uh, so there is your DirectX 11 update currently. Uh, I'm hoping that we see that on the PTS this month in March. That would be happy for me. And with that, let's move on to our fourth and final topic this week. The last topic this week is regarding the ping system in Apex Legends. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to continually talk uh, Apex Legends in the Planet Side uh, podcast that I do. Uh, but some people have been asking for an Apex like ping system to be brought to Planet Side 2. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with how this works in Apex, currently you're able to ping the map with things in game. And you do that by clicking in your middle mouse button in, in Apex Legends. And you can ping things like locations on the map. Like you can look. Uh, wherever you're looking on the screen, you can ping and say, and your character will say, uh, let's go check out that area. Or when you're dropping out, you can ping somewhere and say, let's drop there and make suggestions like that. And your character will actually say these things out loud as well. 
uh, but also when you find items in game, you can ping them and say, here's a particular item. And then when it's been pinged, you can, when somebody else pings something, you can ping on it to say, oh, I'm going to come get that. And it'll show, stay on your screen longer. And when you see somebody, you can ping them and say, you know, oh, I saw somebody over there and, and stuff like that. So people are asking for that to be brought to planet side. And I guess one of the main reasons for that is because Fortnite also just brought that same ping system into their game to copy apex legends. Uh, and people are thinking that this might be a good update for planet side Two to give things like that. And while other people are arguing, uh, you know, that they don't know that this is a great idea, there are definitely instances where it could be very useful uh, like the Q spot obviously works well on its own within Planet Side 2, but there are certainly times when you want to target out a single player, single person or something like that. Uh, and I could definitely see something like this being brought into Planet Side 2, and I would actually like something like this brought into Planet Side 2. And I'm hoping Planet Side Arena folks are bringing something like this in as we speak into Planet Side Arena, because there's always times when. A good example is you got a whole bunch of Sunderers stuck together or a whole bunch of tanks stuck together, and you want to focus fire on an individual tank or, or Sunderer. A ping system like this would be a great idea. Um, obviously, we have the way ways to set waypoints and things like that in the game, so that's it's not needed for something like that. Uh, and obviously, queue spotting specific people, it's not really needed for something like that. But I could definitely see allowing an option like this to... Uh, change and I would all if I was designing something like this uh, I would just build on top of the existing Q spot function uh, and I would even just allow you to hold down the Q key when you've spotted somebody uh, and bring up some sort of uh, you know radial dial that you can select through quickly uh, to say target this person or you know go, go to this area it, specifically targeting people is where I can see it working the best you know, holding down that Q key and then saying if it was given to something like squad leaders, platoon leaders and fire team leaders that would relay that information to their platoon squad and fire team folks uh, to specifically target something or specifically head to some area on the map. That would not be a terrible idea. Uh, and I would be definitely behind bringing like something like that into Planet Side Two, and hopefully, like I said before, they're bringing something like that already to Planet Side Arena because uh, really the ping system works really well in Apex Legends, and uh, it means that even people who don't have microphones and headsets are able to participate really well within Apex at this point. Uh, so bringing something like this would kind of be a no-brainer for Planet Side Two at this point. So. Uh, I'm kind of on the pro side for it, uh, and I would really stack it onto that Q key. Like I said, if you just hold it down, uh, I would love to see a, a dial come up and allow us to quickly, kind of like the friends, you know, when you Q spot a friendly uh, and you hold it down, you get that little dial that pops up and you say, you know, I need a ride or uh, stuff like that within the game itself. I'd love to see something like that added into the Q spot function. And I don't know how difficult that would be, but hopefully that's something that Planet Side 2, the Daybreak Games dev, can actually think about for the game. So with that, let's move on to housekeeping this week. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Come back later, please. Housekeeping? Not now. Housekeeping? Go away. I coming anyway? So uh, another light week, no voicemail, no nothing going on. So that's actually going to be it for this week's show. As always, how can you get in touch with me or the show? First, visit my website, www.instantactionpodcast.com. You can also send me an email at instantactionshow at gmail.com. You can also call me and leave me a voicemail at 347 347- 4VM4PS2. Those digits are 347 486 4772. And also, you can follow the show on Twitter at Instact Podcast. But as always, in closing, if you've enjoyed the show, please leave me a review on your podcast listening avenue of choice, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or anywhere else. Also, feel free to tell your friends and outfit mates about the show. But finally, Thanks for listening and keep spamming that join combat, formerly known as Instant Action Button.